Barnaby Jones, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Buddy Epson. Also starring Lee Merriweather. With guest stars Barry Brown, William Smith, James Luisi. Tonight's episode, Hostage. Thanks again for inviting uh, me. My pleasure. Good to see you. You too. Uh, Don't forget, lock your door. Huh? Oh, yeah, thanks. Okay. trouble now. You understand that, huh? No trouble. Jones, can I help you? I think you can now, Mr. Jones. This is Corey Doyle. Son, I told you there's nothing I can do for you. Well, I think there is. Corey, you don't understand. Jones, I got Betty. You what? You heard me. Tell him. After I left Ellen's last night, he forced me off the road. Betty, are you all right? My head hurts a little. He had me blindfolded. Jones, you listen to me. You're gonna help my brother. Your brother was found guilty by a jury. Well, they were wrong. He didn't kill his wife. Do you think what you're doing is gonna change anything? It's gonna get you started looking into it. I did look into it. I had nothing to go on, not one shred of new evidence. 
I told, I told you about that man. You didn't even know his name. You couldn't prove anything. Well, that is what I want you to find out. I tried. Well, then maybe you didn't try hard enough, huh? Well, you're going to now, Jones, if you ever want to see Betty alive again. Corey, if you do one thing to hurt her... Then what, huh? I'm going to give you 48 hours, Jones, and no police. Or she's dead. Corey. Corey. Kidnapped. <laughs> to try to force me to help you. Well, what do you know? The kid's got guts. You know where the guts are going to get him. He's trying to help me. What's wrong with that? Why don't you try to help him? Tell me where he's hiding before it's too late. You're the private detective. Find him yourself. I looked. Not a trace. Then how am I supposed to know where he is? You must have some idea. Come on, Doyle. Think. I am thinking. I'm thinking the kid's the only chance I've gotten. I'm not going to throw it away. Look, Jones, I'm sorry about your daughter-in-law, but what about me? I didn't kill Wanda Jean. You've got to believe that. They found her blood on your shirt. We had a fight. I hit her. She came tearing back at me like some wildcat. But she was alive when I left the house that night. What was the fight about? I was jealous. All some guy had to do was look in her direction. I... I'd accuse them of having an affair. Was she having an affair with someone? No. Corey thinks she was. But he's wrong! Look, uh, she was pretty. A lot of guys looked at her, but she was in love with me. According to your testimony, you went back to your boat that night and kept drinking until you passed out. That's right. When I came to, it was morning. I went home, she was gone. She'd taken a suitcase and some clothes with her. So you figured she left you? She threatened to before. A few days later, I was coming in from a cruise. The police were waiting for me. They told me that Wanda Jean's body had been washed ashore. She'd been beaten to death. Dumped in the sea. There was a rope uh, around her body. It must have been tied to some weight or some, some. I loved her, Jones. I wouldn't have killed her. I swear. Maybe so. But it doesn't leave me much time to prove it. Then you better get moving. Corey's a good kid, but when he makes up his mind to do something, he'll do it, Jones. He'll do what he says. Better? Corey, this is crazy. Do you have any idea what you're doing? Well, you're here, aren't you? Let me go. Oh, oh, that'd be like holding four aces and throwing in your hand. Is that what this is to you, a game? Oh, it's not a game to me. I'm helping my brother. And if you knew him as well as I do, you know he couldn't kill anyone, and especially Wanda Jean. Corey, you let me go. And I swear to you that Barnaby and I will do everything in our power to prove that he didn't kill her. Yeah, well, then why didn't he do that last time, huh? But he just didn't care. That's not true. It is. Corey, I understand how you feel about your brother, but well, look, I... you don't know nothing about it. Look, when our folks were killed in that accident, they wanted to stick me in an orphanage, and Joe wouldn't let him. He said, no way. He's my responsibility. I take care of him. And he did. 
He was still almost a kid himself. He took care of me better than my own dad, whatever. Well, now, now he needs me. I'm all he's got left. And I am not going to let him down. Corey, whatever you think you might be doing for your brother, you're, you're going at it the wrong way. It's the only way I got left. You better hope Jones is playing by the rules. What took you so long, huh? I drove around for a while. You, you what? Corey, I had to think. Think about what? I'm afraid. You're going to run out on me, weren't you? Weren't you? Yes, I thought about it. But I came back. I knew it. I knew it. And all this talk about digging me, you wanting to be with me. It's the truth. Yeah, but the first time things get a little rough, you start thinking about splitting. I didn't know it was going to be like this. Well, what did you think I was planning, huh? A picnic? I told you what I was going to do. You even volunteer. We use your uncle's place while he was away. I know. Well, you better know this, too. Bringing her here makes you my partner. We are in this together, Shannon, and there is no backing out. You understand? Yes. That's my girl. somehow does get your brother off. We've still kidnapped that lady. They'll put us away. Well, they have to find us first. Or didn't I tell you? We'll be leaving town. Where to? Hey, you just let me take care of that. Besides, if there's no victim. How can there be a kidnapping? But there is one. Now, if they can't find her, there ain't. Wait a minute. I never figured you'd go that far. It's the only way to handle it. And Shannon, there are a lot of places out there where somebody can hide a body. You'll never be found. Come on, I can use cold beer. Glad you get out of here so fast. Well, you made it sound pretty important on the phone. What do you think? Well, I don't think it's going to increase the resale value. Barnaby, this is Betty's car. Yeah, I know it's Betty's car. I can tell by the dent. Alaska's Gourmet Market. Betty figures that can of imported smoked oysters cost her about 150 bucks. It's a story here, Barnum. Well, if you ask me, I would say a simple case of abandonment. You telling me that Betty just got tired of her car, so she drove it off the road and walked away? Not Betty. Whoever it was stole it from her. Probably had a little accident, ran off. Well, it was stolen. How else would it get here? Well, didn't you report it? 
Well, I didn't know about it till just now, and uh, Betty didn't know about it either. She's uh, been out of town a couple of days. Out of town? Yeah, uh, Phoenix. I sent her over there to do a little work for me. I, I uh, just talked to her about an hour ago. Mr. Stevens. I believe you two know each other. Mr. Jones. Mr. Stevens was just driving by when he saw Betty's car. I thought it looked like Betty's, and, uh, well, I, well, I was afraid something had happened to her. Barnaby, Mr. Stevens says that Betty had dinner at their house last night. Didn't leave till almost 12 o'clock. Now, what's going on here? Mr. Stevens, uh, would you excuse us? Sure, then. Betty's been kidnapped. What? Corey Doyle. He says he'll kill her unless I get his brother off. So that's why you went to see Joe Doyle this morning? Yeah, I heard about it. That's why. Any idea where he's holding her? Not a clue. All right, then you've got to let me help you. I can't do that. If Corey finds out that the police are in on it, Betty hasn't got a chance. He won't find out. I'll only put my key men on it. They've handled cases like this before. They know what they're doing. You got to trust me, Barnaby. OK. I'll get right on it. Thanks. Oh, well, John, uh, I want to go through Joe Doyle's place. I need permission. You got it. One other thing. Uh, is there any chance that Wanda Jean had a mystery lover? Well, we heard talk, but uh, nothing you could put a name or a face to. Thanks. Take it real easy, Jones. And hand it over. All right, Corey, you've made your point. Now, why don't you let Betty go, and I'll do everything I can to help your brother? We already got our deal, Jones. And you better be a pretty good shot, because if I get my hands on you, you won't leave this room. Oh, then she's dead. I got somebody watching her. If I don't get back, she's dead. Now, why don't you just listen to me, Jones? I might be able to help you. How? Well, I remembered Wanda Jean got this present once. I know it didn't come from my brother, so it must have come from someone else. What kind of present? Well, all I know is it came in a small box, or maybe it's a piece of jewelry. But I figured that whoever sent it, he might have given her other things. And maybe there's some uh, letters or pictures, and that's what I was looking for when you showed up. Find anything? Well, just these. Forever, DJ. All my love, DJ. Now, I figured they, uh, they must have come with the presents. Where'd you find them? The dresser over there, underneath the lining of the drawer. A DJ. Could be Joe Doyle backwards. Might have been a little joke they had. That handwriting is not my brother's. And why would she hide him? You have any idea who DJ is? No, no. 
But this proves that I was right about another man, now, doesn't it? Might. All right. Then you better get on it, Jones. Because time is running out. I was wondering how long it'd take you to get to me. I heard talk there was a tall, gray-haired man asking questions around the pier. If I'd known you was a handsome, I might have come to you. And if I'd known you were this much woman, I'd have started here. <laughs> oh, you got the blarney in you, all right. Information costs money, and I'm a sea of information. So I understand. Uh, how well did you know Joe Doyle's wife? Wanda Jean? <laughs> she was quite a looker. Turned a lot of heads around here. Any other heads besides her husband? Maybe. Who are you looking for? The initials D.J. bring anyone to mind? Not offhand, but I'll check around. Do you know Joe's brother, Corey? Corey's a loner, young hothead. Any special friends he might be staying with? Not that I can think of. Girlfriend? You know, I did see him with this girl a few times. Pretty thing if you like him scrawny. I don't know a name, though. There's a hundred dollars in it for you, if you find it quick. Mr. Jones, I like the way you do business. If I hear about Corey, uh, where can I reach you? Number's on the card. We'd better get a move on, Skipper. That tanker will be in soon. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put him on. Barnaby? Any news, Lieutenant? Not yet. But I've put out a general APB on Corey with orders that if he's spotted, he's to be kept under surveillance, not interfered with. And we're checking out some of the places he used to work before he teamed up with his brother. Even talking to some of his old high school classmates. Now, something will turn up. I certainly hope it turns up in time. Listen, Barnaby, I'm, I'm sure he's just bluffing. I'd like to think so, Lieutenant, but I've been doing some checking on Corey myself. And from what I've learned, I think he means what he says. I'll be in touch. Uh, yeah. Your salad's almost ready. I like lots of dressing. I know what you mean. Corey's the same way. Gets him so mad when he goes into a restaurant and he orders a salad and they bring it to him with not enough dressing. Once he got so mad that he just knocked it right off the table, all over the floor. <laughs> what a mess. Well, if he has such a temper, why in the world do you stay with him? He's kind of exciting. My mom never liked him much, but hell, my mom never liked any of my boyfriends much. She kicked him out every chance she got. Then she ran off with a merchant seaman and left me. Can you beat that? Almost a year, and she didn't even send me a postcard. <sighs> Lots. There we go. Have some crackers instead of the bread. Yeah, I think I saw some in the cupboard. Mm -hmm. I was wrong about the crackers. Oh, that's all right.
Here's one. Dahl Jurgensen. 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 He's captain of the Lost Star, part of the tuna fleet. First at Pier 7. Thank you. No. It doesn't match? Not even close. I don't think Captain Jurgensen's age matches either. He's 68. Well, that's it. Harbor master. Yes, he's here. Hold on. It's for you. Thanks. Yeah. Jones, Mother McCoy. Your answering service told me where to find you. You have something for me? Uh, yeah, some information on Corey's girlfriend. What is it? <laughs> Unless you want to slip a hundred dollar bill through the telephone wire. That's no way to run a cash and carry business. I'll meet you at your stand in 10 minutes. Right. What can I do for you, Hopper? What do you want? What did I want? The gray-haired man that was here earlier, one that was on the phone just now. He wanted to know when the albacore were biting. What did he want? He's a private detective. He just wanted some information on Corey Doyle. What kind of information? Who his friends were, if he had a girl. Why? He didn't tell me, honest. <laughs> Come on, McCoy, you were talking to him for an awfully long time. Yeah. He wanted to know if I knew what the initials DJ stood for. What did you tell him? I said I couldn't think of anything. I. You what? All I'll tell him is about Corey's girlfriend. I, I promise. No, no, you won't tell him anything. But I already told him I had some information. I if I climb up now, he'll get suspicious. He just don't seem like the kind that'll walk away. That's all I'll tell him. You can trust me. All right. But if he should come looking around for me, I'll know who sent him. Do you understand, Mother? What's her name, Mr. Jones? Is first name or last name? Only one I could get. Where does she live? I don't know. Where can I get in touch with her? Your guess is as good as mine. Then why am I giving you $100 for it? Uh, well, uh, she was working at the 100-footer, but from what I understand, she's not there anymore. 100-footer? It's a private club down in the marina. You have to own a yacht 100-footer more to become a member. That's private. Well, that's all I know, Mr. Jones. So, uh, if it'll excuse me, uh, I've got work to do. What about the uh, initials, DJ? Uh, uh, nothing yet, but, but I'll let you know as soon as I find out. His name's Nelson, Shannon Nelson. Pretty kid, but kind of strange. Strange? Well, you know, like she was just passing through on her way to a, another planet. Any idea where she lived when she was on this one? Shh. What she gave us was a post office box. No telephone number where you might have called her? She didn't even have a social security number. Kept promising to bring it in, but when she didn't, we let her go. She only worked here a couple of weeks. Well, oh, thanks. How much for the milk? Uh, two fifty. Keep the change. Thanks. Oh, uh, 
Just picture the tugboat. What about it? Seems a little out of place, like a plow horse at the Kentucky Derby. That's what it is, all right, an old workhorse. Davy Jones, DJ. What's the skipper's name? George Hopper. Had that picture taken just the other day. Brought it in himself as a joke. You remember? Honorary. Best tugboat skipper in the business. He usually come in by himself? Tell you the truth, I uh, never really noticed. Uh, Pete, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Could I borrow this a couple of days? Sure. Anyone willing to pay three bucks for a glass of milk deserves a favor. Borrow it. Thanks. That's right. What about it? Well, uh, my name is Barnaby Jones. I'm a private investigator. Uh, may I come aboard? I'm uh, just getting ready to shove off. Well, this won't take long. Uh, what was it you wanted? How well did you know Wanda Jean Doyle? Who says I knew her at all? These cards. Wouldn't take a handwriting expert to notice that uh, the letters are. Uh, just about matching the ones on your cabin here. Well? Leave me alone, Jones. I got a wife and kids. Sure, I'll leave you alone. But I doubt if the police will when I show them these cards. Uh, they might even come ask you questions in front of your family, so you got a choice. All right. All right, I knew Wanda Jean Doyle. My question was, uh, how well did you know her? We were in love. We had been for years. We were even married once. You were married to her? Yeah. Yeah, a long time ago. She was 16 and I was 20 and we ran off to Tijuana. Parents found out about it and had the marriage annulled. Then what happened? Well, we went our separate ways. I finally got married again, and so did she. Everything was fine. Till I bumped into her about a year ago and asked her to have a drink. Said okay. And it all started over again between us. I, I mean, we couldn't keep away from each other. Did her husband know about you? No. No, I don't think so. Did you ever talk about uh, getting married again? She talked about it. What about you? Look, Jones, I got two great kids, a nice wife, and they need me. All right, all right, maybe I don't love my wife like I loved Wanda Jean, but I would do anything to keep from hurting her. Like uh, kill somebody who threatened to tell her what was going on? Come on. Come on, Jones, you're not saying I killed Wanda Jean. Stranger things have happened. Mr. Hopper, this coil of white line here. Where'd that come from? Are you saying it's not yours? I'm saying I never seen it before. Seems to me they found some white rope on Wanda Jean's body. Could have been this type. Look, Jones, I'm saying I have never seen that before. The line is not mine. Well, it was not yours. Then you won't mind my taking it with me, will you? Looks pretty convincing, doesn't it? Yes, as far as the cards go, but. Something about the rope that bothers me. Kind of fell in my lap. Well, what do you know? Not there. Use coils aligned. Yeah, what about them? 
That's where I found this. So? Well, that picture was only made three days ago. It's not there. And Hopper said it didn't belong on the boat. Any idea how it got there? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Recognize it? Is that the rope they found on Wanda Jean's body? And that must be the piece it was cut from. What else? What do you mean, what else? The ends, Doyle. The whipped ends. These are what I believe is known as whippings. You tie the end of a rope that way to keep the strands from unraveling. But whoever did this one didn't do a very good job. Now, who do you know that does work like that? Nobody. That's funny, because on the way down here, I went by your boat and I went aboard, and I found several examples just like this. Who worked on your boat beside you? My brother. That's what I figured. Wait a minute, wait a minute, what do you say? You think Corey killed Wanda Jean? He knew how much I loved her? You think... She was my wife. Do you think my brother would kill my wife and let me take the blame for it? I don't think he meant for you to take the blame. No, you're wrong. He wouldn't kill anybody. He wouldn't. I mean, why? What reason would he have? I'm not sure. But I know we've got to find him before he kills somebody else. <laughs> The other unit's in position. Anything? Sure, no sign of him. Didn't you say Doyle called it just a hunch? He used to let Corey off here to visit his girl sometimes. Well, one way to find out. We've got the house covered. Now, don't worry. We won't move in until we know Betty's safe. Oh, and Barnaby, no hero stuff, huh? Another half hour, then we'll call. You better have something. Corey, maybe there's another way. Maybe we don't have to kill her. Well, there's no other way, Shannon. You just let me handle it. It's Jones. How did he find us? So, okay, listen, take this gun and get in there. If there's any trouble, you use it. You understand? Jones. Corey? What are you doing here? We had a deal, don't you remember? I was to find one of Gene's killer, and you were going to let Betty go. Mm-hmm. Well? I found him. Oh, you tell the police? Not until after you let Betty go. Uh, uh, no way, Jones. Now, first you give them the proof, then I let her go. How do I know she's safe? Shannon! All right, she's safe, Jones. But she won't be if you try anything. Are you alone? You don't see anybody with me, do you? All right. Now, you get back into town, and you tell the police what you found out. Aren't you even curious about who the real killer is? It was the guy who was sending Wanda Jean those presents, right? No, Corey. It was you. <laughs> what are you talking about? You killed her, Corey. Then when they convicted your brother, you knew you'd have to do something about it. You loved him too much to let him take the blame, but you weren't man enough to take it yourself. You don't know what you're talking about, Jones. You had it set up pretty good. You almost had me sold. Those notes from Hopper, I figured you found them a long time ago. Just waited for the right time to show them to me. <laughs> you're crazy, man. Your brother didn't think so. He told me where to find you. 
What'd you tell him? Same thing I'm telling you. And he... He believe you? Yep. He just didn't understand why. Why? Because she was a tramp, man! I saw her and Hopper in this bar once. They were sitting way in the back and they didn't see me. But I followed them out and when they went across the street, they went across the street to a hotel. She was a tramp, man. You understand that? A tramp? She was also very pretty, wasn't she, Corey? Yeah. And I figured if Hopper's good enough for her, why not me, huh? I went to see my brother that night. He was gone. They had a fight. And Wanda Jean, she's uh, getting ready for bed. And she had on a nightgown. But when I tried to touch her, she got mad. And she said she'd tell Joe if I didn't leave. But uh, she was so pretty, man. And uh, well, I wanted her so much. So you made one more pass? Yeah. Only this time, she started to scream. And she started to fight back. And then I lost my temper, and I hit her hard. But I didn't mean to kill her, man. I swear, I didn't mean to kill her. Oh, God. All right. You'll never get off the ground. got there in time. Thanks to you, it all worked out OK. This may sound strange to you, uh, Jones, but I really feel I did the right thing helping you find my brother. I just couldn't stand by knowing that somebody else could be killed. You did the right thing. You sure you won't come along? The albacore are really biting. I'd love to. But we have a belated birthday party to celebrate. Have a good catch. I will, thank you. See you. Goodbye. You know, Barbie, there's one thing I don't understand. I thought you said that you had to own at least a 100-foot yacht to come over near this place. Betty, look at it this way. In the course of my life, I must have owned 10 rowboats. Now, if you put all those boats together end to end, <laughs> see what I mean? Yes, I see what you mean. <laughs> now, after I light this, if you can blow out all the candles with one breath, you get your wish. Any help? No, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> 